Okay, this video is for the statistics student who is not afraid of math. Ha <laughs> ha, my kind of person. Okay, so we, uh, so what we're going to do is, we've been talking about regression lines, and I've made some statements, and I've, I've kind of made them like, well, you should trust me, just believe what I say. That's not what mathematicians do, though. Mathematicians don't just trust you. Mathematicians like to prove exactly why something is the way it is. So, we said that we want to find this line, y hat equals, forgive me for a second, uh, I'm going to go back to the old way of describing a linear function, that is mx plus b instead of b naught plus b, uh, b sub 1 times x. Uh, I find it easier if I use different letters. So I'm going to go back to algebra 2 for a second and say y hat is mx plus b, okay? And if you remember, uh, we have a set of data Okay, we've got some set, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, etc. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to find, yeah, we're going to find the, uh, the line that predicts this line, that predicts this data the best. Okay? And in particular, what we're going to do is we're going to take the residuals, y1, sorry, yi minus y hat i. That's a residual for one point. We're going to square those residuals. Then we're going to sum them all up from 1 to n. And we're going to say, we want the y hat that makes this sum of squared residuals the smallest possible. So we're going to minimize that thing, okay? Now, before I get going too far, I want to remind us of a couple of things. Number one, remember that guy? Quadratic function, remember what it looks like? A parabola with the vertex. Remember what the vertex is? It's the lowest point on that parabola. It's the point, it's the x value that minimizes that function. Uh huh, see where this is going? Okay, we're going to end up with a quadratic function. And I want to remind you that in a quadratic function, this point is the lowest point. It's the point that minimizes it. And the x coordinate at this point is negative b over 2a. I don't care what the y coordinate of the point is, but I do care what the x coordinate is. And it's negative b over 2a. That is to say, negative middle coefficient divided by 2 times the first coefficient. Okay? That's one thing. There's another thing that I want to point out, and that is this. If you have the sum, as i goes from 1 to n, of, let's say, uh, xi squared minus yi, for example. Okay? What this means is x1 squared minus y1 plus x2 squared minus y, uh, minus y2 plus x3 squared minus y3, etc., 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 etc. Okay, think about when you're adding up a whole bunch of terms. The commutative law of addition tells us it doesn't matter what order we add in. So what that means is I could add up all the x terms first. I could say this equals the sum from 1 to n of x of all the x terms squared minus the sum as i goes from 1 to n of all the y terms. We good there? I hope so. If you can remember this and if you can accept this, we're all good to go. All right, so what is this? Well, this is y i minus, remember what that is? m x plus b. Let me just put that in there. m times x i plus b squared, right? Well, let me go ahead and uh, distribute out that, uh, that negative there. So that's going to be the sum of uh, y i minus m x i minus b squared. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let me just group it this way. Okay? So now I've got the sum of all these guys minus b squared. And I know how to do that. I know how to expand that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, well, this just equals the sum as i goes from 1 to n of this guy, yi minus mxi, here, let me use square brackets, squared, minus 2 times this times this, minus 2 times yi minus mxi uh, times b, plus this squared, plus b squared. Okay? Looks messy, but it's about to clean up. All right. Uh, now I want to split apart my, uh, um, my sums. I want to add this stuff up, and then I'm going to subtract two times the sum of all that stuff. And then, well, look, if I have the sum as I, as I goes from 1 to n of just b squared, that's just b squared plus b squared plus b squared. So that's just n times b squared. Okay? So let me rewrite this, and actually I'm also going to reorder the terms. Let me put this one first. So this is n times b squared minus 2 times b times the sum, as i goes from 1 to n, of uh, yi minus mxi plus the sum, as i goes from 1 to n, of yi minus mxi squared. Okay, guess what this is? This is, all right, let, let, let's just pause for a second and think, what are we doing? We're finding the line, okay? We're finding the line, the mx plus b, that minimizes this function, okay? So now for a second, let's think, well, I've got m, I've got b, I need to find both m and b. For a second, let's think to ourselves, I'm just going to try to find b. That is to say, let me show you what I mean. That is to say, I've got a scatter plot here, and let's say I'm just going to compare a bunch of lines that all have the exact same slope. And I'm going to say, if all those lines have the exact same slope, let me find the one that minimizes the sum of the squared residuals. Let me find the b that's going to minimize the sum of the squared residuals, assuming that all the m's are the same. Okay? So back up here, what that means is, this is a function of b. Okay? It's a function of b. And not only is it a function of b, it's a quadratic function of b. Something times b squared minus something times b plus something. That's a quadratic function. I know how to find the minimum of the quadratic function. It's going to be where b equals negative middle coefficient. So that's negative, negative 2 times this mess. The sum of yi minus mxi as i goes from 1 to n over 2 times this guy. Well, let's see. Negative, negative, that goes away. 2 over 2, that goes away. And what I'm left with is 1 over n, that's my denominator times the sum of yi minus m times xi, i goes from 1 to n. And I think I can fit this in. Uh, actually, I don't think I can fit it in. Okay? So let me just erase this for a second.
okay? And so now uh, I can split this up one more time and I can say this equals 1n times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of yi minus m times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of xi. And look, 1 over n times the sum of all the y's, that's just the average of the y's. And m times 1 over n times the sum of all the x's, that's just the average of the x's. And holy moly, it all simplifies out to this, that b equals y bar minus m times x bar. Rewriting this a little bit, we get that y bar equals m x bar plus b. And what that means is the point x bar, y bar has to be on our line. It must be on our line. Okay? So that's a really good first thing to know is that y hat goes through the point x bar, y bar. Okay? Now you're ready for regression for geeks only, part two.